Hey everybody, today we're gonna to be talking about the cost of living in Uptown slash the Galleria. If that's what you wanna know more about, stick around, we're getting after it right now. Hey everybody, welcome back. This channel is all about living in Houston, Texas. The good, the bad, the ugly, the ins and outs. If you want to know more about that, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. That way you're notified every time we put out a new video. If you're thinking about moving to Houston, you're going to need to align yourself with somebody who knows the city, has been doing this for a long time, understands the complexities, and can help navigate and guide you to where you need to be. Give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. We love helping people. So let's get into it. Cost of living in the Galleria Uptown area. So the research that we did is based on the zip code 77056, which encompasses the larger Galleria area, which we're gonna pop up on the map here for you yeah. to see. We're actually gonna be honing in and talking specifically about the Galleria Uptown district. Just know that some of these numbers are a little bit skewed because you've got mm -hmm. surrounding neighborhoods like Tanglewood, which is one of the most uh, wealthiest neighborhoods in all of Houston. And so that skews the, the numbers up a little bit. So the overall cost of living, we're gonna look at the national average is, is, is at 100. Yep. You've got Texas for overall is 94.2%. Mm -hmm. And the zip code 77056 is at 135.8. Yeah. So it's 35.8% higher than the national average overall. But again, we have that Tanglewood yeah, I was gonna say. Anchoring yes. that, um, which again is one of the wealthiest neighborhoods. You've okay, so we're gonna cut to the chase today and we're gonna give you the goods early on in the video and talk about what we think is the most important item on cost of living, which is- Biggest factor. Biggest factor is housing. So within that area of, of Uptown, you really, your only choices to live are, are high rises or um, like mid-rise condominium buildings. Right. So you're not looking at any single family homes, so it's it's a unique, almost kind of like a New York lifestyle, right. but but it's not New York. It's it's Houston, <laughs> very much so. We don't have the density of buildings, although there are some clusters. As a realtor who's a member of the MLS here in Houston, I can actually go in and drill down and and pull all the stats and and even you know narrow things down. For today's right. purposes, I'm going to give you kind of a broad range of what housing looks like. Okay. So like a one bedroom, one bath condominium would range would start at like 224,000 which is pretty reasonable that's for like a 770 774 square foot condo basically yeah. um but that goes on up to 2.25 million wow, yeah. for a three bedroom three and a half um 4,000 square foot you know condo on the 19th floor of a beautiful high rise yeah. and of course that's going to come with a lot more amenities than the building that the one bedroom's in. So those are not in the same building. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that a lot of people don't know or think about or talk about that I think is really important to discuss are maintenance fees. When you live in these condos or high rise buildings, you have maintenance fees. And in the older buildings, they tend to be really high, but they're also high in some of the newer buildings because of all of the amenities. Mm -hmm. Did you wanna say something? Oh, I was just saying it's a good news, bad news. The good news is is you don't have to take care of anything. You don't have to mow the yard. You don't have to, you know, bad news is is It's low maintenance, pay, you but you have to pay, pay for, for it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so for example, that one bedroom that I mentioned, um, it has a maintenance fee of $400 a month. So mm -hmm. when you're, you know, planning for your mortgage and your monthly payment, you have to factor that in. Now, that covers the building and grounds, the uh, clubhouse, the concierge, Courtesy patrol, limited access gates. So they got security. Yeah, got security, got an on-site guard, um, recreational facilities like swimming pool, but it also includes um, valet trash removal. Mm -hmm. So you just put it, they give you a, a specific type of trash can, you put it outside the door each night and they pick it up. Um, so you don't have to run down to the trash chute, that kind of thing, which is very convenient. And then it also includes valet parking and water and sewer. Wow, so you don't even have to park your own car. Right, if you don't want to. But if you can, you have, you have that option. So the maintenance fee for the 4,000 square foot place that was 2.25 million um, is $2,509 a month. 
So big difference between the 400 and the 2509. But that would be expected, obviously, as the price point goes up and you've got a lot more square feet. So that includes building and grounds. This one includes basic cable TV. Mm. Also the clubhouse concierge, insurance for the common area, uh, your limited access, partial utilities, recreational facilities like fitness center, pool, that kind of thing, uh, trash removal, valet parking, and water and sewer. So it does cover a lot. Yeah. Um, and essentially you would just be left paying for your electricity bill and then any streaming services, internet, that kind of thing. So they're not gonna provide you with internet, but they will provide you with basic cable. One of the things to note is if you're an investor thinking about buying one of these condominiums, not all of these buildings accept short-term rentals. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to do short-term rentals, like rent it out as an Airbnb or home away, that kind of thing, you need to make sure, and that's why you wanna work with a good realtor, to find that out before you buy the property because you don't want to get into a situation where you bought it as an investment and can't well, do what you And also the flip of that, right? It. If you buy it because you like the building, you like the amenities, you like the location, and you want to have neighbors and then come to find out that everybody on your floor is just an investor, you know, doing Airbnbs. You whatever the situation is whether you are an investor or you want to be able to have a livable building you want to be able to go through and and know the details of that and work with somebody who Absolutely. is thinking along those lines so it's an important question to ask so i'm just going to give you a, a very short list of of some of the buildings that are here we've got the cosmopolitan the astoria mm. the manhattan the empire oxford mercer lofts on post oak there are some others um, but I just wanted to give you kind of a quick list and we'll we'll put some links again to mm -hmm. some of these properties so you can get an idea. And we've got some good B-roll going here for you so <laughs> you can see what these places look like. So if you're somebody that for whatever reason in your life situation, you need low maintenance, what do they call it? Lock and go? Lock and go. If you want to have a lock and go. Lifestyle. Lifestyle. You I like mean, to travel a lot. Yeah. You don't have to worry about taking care of a yard, you know. Mm -hmm. You might need to pay somebody to come water your plants if you have plants, <laughs> but no. other than that, yeah. pretty self-sufficient. Okay, so that I think is a good segue actually into utilities. Yeah. Okay, so the utilities, you know, national average being 100, Texas came in at 99.2, so we've got pretty good, yeah. obviously, energy prices. So the 77056 zip code comes in at 96.4, so mm -hmm. it's a little bit lower. Than even Texas. Than yeah. even Texas. So that's really good news. In Texas, we have um, deregulation, which we've talked about in past videos. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that? Well, deregulation when it comes to uh, power, or, or particularly electricity, it's a good, again, it's a good news, bad news. Uh, it helps drive or keep the price down, but it can oft also be uh, very confusing uh, when you're trying to pick your power plan. Powerchoose.com, and the cool thing about it is you can, you can go in and pick like, and we recommend getting a fixed rate because the people who, um, during the freeze, had variable rates or, got completely screwed Yeah. because huh, those rates went way up. Um, and I mean, they had bills that were thousands of dollars. So we, we really like, give us a call and we will give you some guidance on that. Some people I've heard talk about um, thinking it's overwhelming and it really doesn't have to be overwhelming at yeah. all. It's, this website is so helpful. If you know a few key things to filter in your search, mm -hmm. um, it can be super easy. You can filter it by what type of electricity, if you're gonna get, if you want it from renewable sources, uh, if you care or don't care about that kind of thing, fixed rate, what the cancellation fees are, what the terms are, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you want a year contract, a two year? Do you just want month to month? Knowing that that rate won't stay the same. Right. So give us a call, we're happy to help um, give you some advice on that. Sure, and we're going through that right now. We're going to have to renew. We're going to have to renew soon, and we're renew. a little bit freaked out because rates have <laughs> gone way up yep. since we signed our last contract two years ago, which was was really nice that we had locked ourselves locked ourselves into that low rate. Yep. Okay, so the next topic. Oh well, actually, utilities. Let me not forget. There's other things besides electricity. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And these buildings, remember, most of them are going to be only electric. Most of these high rises are zoned to have electricity only, so you most likely won't have a gas bill. Um, in the event that you did have a gas bill, it would go through center point. You don't have a choice on that. And the water, again, most of these buildings pay yeah, one water bill and you pay the building. 
in that maintenance fee, but if not, if for some reason you had your own water bill, it would go through the city of Houston. Okay, so moving on to transportation. Mm -hmm. National average is 100. Texas is 103.3. Which surprises me, but... Well, 77056 is 105.2. Okay. It's probably because you have to sit in so much traffic. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we talked about that, or we will talk about that. One of the great things about this neighborhood that can really impact and lower that cost is the walkability score was something like an 86, yep. which is really good for the city of Houston. And then also the public transportation. They went and did, uh, and do you have that in your notes? Are you mm -hmm. gonna cover that? It's the, yeah, it's, yeah, it's called the Metro Rapid. So they basically, it's, and it's the silver line that runs along Post Oak Boulevard. So it basically goes in between the West Park um, Metro Transit Center and the um, Northwest Transit Center. So you can, for people who are heading in from the suburbs, they can actually connect to this bus line, the silver line, so that they don't have to sit in traffic on 610 because they have their own dedicated bus line. But it's it's a hybrid almost of a what a light rail and a bus would be. Um, so when you are getting the platforms, it's all level. So you're stepping right onto the bus. You don't have to go up and down stairs. So it's accessible to everybody. You know, we'll pull up the map here. They run from 5 a.m. to midnight. So pretty good, pretty broad set of hours. If you're out past, um, midnight or between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m. You can take an Uber or a Lyft or ride your bike, although I probably wouldn't advise it that time of night. Mm -hmm. um, we've popped a little map up here so you can see wh which way the line runs. It's $1.25 a ride, so it's super economical. And again, we talked about in our last video, they've planted these majestic um, oaks, live oaks that line the whole boulevard so that if you're waiting outside for the bus and it's summertime you will actually be in the shade which can be up to 20 degrees cooler i think than mm -hmm. just out in the make it bearable yeah make it much more bearable okay so we've talked about housing utilities and transportation next up on our list is healthcare costs so national average is 100 texas is 100 77056 comes in at 95.1%. Yeah, we, you know, we've talked about this in some of our earlier videos. Houston, one of the great things about it is the infrastructure of healthcare, medical care. Some of the, it has the largest med center uh, in the world right here in the Houston Medical Center, but that that infrastructure bleeds out through the entire Houston community, both the quality Quantity and affordability of healthcare in Houston is uh, pretty fantastic. And you're very to... close. Um, and there are some doctors that have their pra like private practices within the 77056 zip code. So you don't necessarily have to go no. to the mm -mm. med center because they're sprinkled out all over. Um, but certainly if you want to go to the medical center, you're... A short you're, little trip in. A short little ride. So the last item on the list... <laughs> It's groceries because everybody has to eat. Everybody has to eat. National average is 100. Texas is 93.7. 77056 comes in at 107.5. Well, yeah, that kind of makes sense because the the largest, you know, it's very convenient. It's high quality, but the 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 main grocery store anchored in that neighborhood is that Whole Foods. The only one. Yeah, yeah the only Whole Foods. One. And it's a beautiful store. And again, you've got, you know, it's a, it's a high rent. It's a high yeah. rent store, high rent location, but it's beautiful. It's a pleasure to shop there. It's, very, it's, it's quality. We are not getting any kickbacks from Whole Foods. No, <laughs> we <should work. laughs> But we do shop there. Yeah. So it makes it super convenient. And again, so the groceries are a little bit higher than, than the national average, but not that much. And you're gonna save on healthcare and transportation. And of course, if you keep eating that healthy food from Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> if you're thinking about moving to Houston, you're going to need to align yourself with somebody who knows the city, has been doing this for a long time, understands the complexities, and can help navigate and guide you to where you need to be. Give us a call, send us a text message, shoot us an email. We'd love to hear from you. And we'd love to help. If you like this content, give us a thumbs up. And also, if you have any questions, put it down in the comment section. And with that, 
See you next time. Next time. Bye-bye.